90.3 WHPC now presents Law You Should Know. The law affects every aspect of our lives, our home, our jobs, and our recreational activities. Now, learn about the law and how to protect yourself against the loss of your liberty or property and learn how to stand up for your rights and seek compensation when you have been wronged. Your host for Law You Should Know is attorney Kenneth J. Landau, a past dean of the Nassau Academy of Law and frequently lectures to lawyers on ethics and avoiding problems with clients and to the public on how to choose and use lawyers. This is Law You Should Know on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Hi, this is Ken Landau, and welcome to Law You Should Know. Today, we're going to talk about how you or someone you know can become a real estate salesperson. And our special guest is Bernard Caprera. He instructs the real estate salesperson course, which is going to start soon at Nassau Community College. And he can tell you about why that is a very good field and who can do well in that field. Bernie, welcome to Law You Should Know. Thanks, Ken. You've been teaching the class at Nassau Community on the real estate salesperson qualifying course for a very long time, and you're going to offer it at Nassau Community. And tell us about what people out there in the community, including Nassau Community students, who may find that an interesting career opportunity. Well, basically, it's a great field. Uh, You can make a lot of money, which isn't the main thing, but that's the uh, that's the bonus you get from doing the work. Uh, And but getting the course is not too difficult. Uh, There's several things that you have to complete. Uh, New York State just changed uh, some of the laws and uh, we just went uh, from 75 hours for the salesperson's class. It's going up to 77 hours uh, at the next class we're teaching. Basically, what you have to do is you have to take the 77 hour class. After that, you have to take a class test and pass it with 70% or better. You have to take a state test and pass that also at 70% or better. Uh, Find a broker that you you want to work with and for. Um, And then uh, you get your license and the license fees right now are $65 and that's for two years. And you, at that point, you can get a salesperson's license. And once, you, once you've passed the test, you don't have to take the test every two years. You can just renew your license every two years. Yeah, what you have to do is you have to take 22 and a half hours of continuing education within that two-year period. Okay. Uh, depending on the class, there's only one. I can only think of one class that actually has uh, testing at the end, uh, but most of them don't. Okay, so with if you do work, we'll... we'll Come back to some of the things you cover in the course, some of the information and skills a person needs in the real estate field, and also for passing the test. But it, it is a very flexible field. You could work part time. You could work, you know, several months out of the year. You can sort of be your own boss and a freelancer. Although you you have to work under a real estate broker and have, be affiliated with someone, and you can you you can make money because if you know people who want to buy houses or who want to sell houses, that is a large part of it. And then you're just guiding them through the transaction and helping them to facilitate the sale or purchase of a house. That's correct. Anybody uh, who would be interested, uh, I've been in the business 36 years. I've been licensed. I've also managed a few offices. And uh, there are successful people that come out of uh, people who are current firemen, policemen, or police persons. Uh, and fire people, uh, school teachers, a lot of school teachers, because they're off for the summer, they have time to work in the summertime working with uh, buyers and things. Um, and then they, their school schedule allows them a little more time um, to actually work in real estate, uh, as opposed to some transportation issues and or working overtime and stuff like that with, with other type jobs. But uh, paralegals, another group, uh, that I've I've seen them get be successful in the uh, business and 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 para, and graduate students or even community college students it's a way to make money while you're going to school and as long as you have a little time to work and depending on what your job is it can you it heats up part of the year and you you can spend more time when you know when it's more the selling or buying season for real estate. Yeah, pretty much the buying season. It really all all year round, twenty four seven. Uh, people are buying and selling houses uh, because people need to at certain times. Uh, but things do slow down this time of the year uh, 
once we start getting some bad weather, uh, things will slow down a bit. Uh, the main times would be probably from March through October. And the ones that we're looking at in October usually want to be in before the end of the year to get the tax benefits. And what are some of the skills or personal characteristics that will help someone, or maybe a, another job background or skill set or a career, an earlier career, that will help someone uh, do well in the real estate field? Well, the first thing I think uh, people don't understand is you don't have to be a salesperson to get a real estate license. You can be taught to be a salesperson. Uh, in fact, I always suggest that uh, when uh, somebody gets their license, one of the questions they'll ask me is, what brokerage should they go to? And I don't give them names of specific brokers, but the one thing that I key on is a broker that has a training program. And if they get a, a, the proper training, they can learn how to be a salesperson. Um, tech, uh, I think the numbers are uh, 75% of the new licensees are out of the business within two years. So uh, that's a problem. And the, the basic problem for that is not having uh, enough education. And, and how can someone learn to be the salesperson? Is there a certain, you know, is it a qu question of li listening or, or finding prospects? What are some of the keys to learning real estate sales? Like I say, if you go into a bigger company, they have a formal training programs. Um, for instance, my company has a week long, right now they're doing Zoom, uh, week long classes. They teach you how to prospect for business, which means how to go find people who want to buy and sell houses. Uh, they talk about your sphere of influence. That's the people you know in your own circle. Uh, they teach you how to deal with people who want to sell the house on their own. It's a for sale by owners. We refer to them as FISBOs and houses that have been listed with somebody else and the listing has expired. Uh, and there's a lot of different ways of uh, looking for business. So basically, uh, uh, somebody, the skills they're going to need as being a person, a people person. And um, also, it could be knowing people. You, you Through your work, through your community involvement, for just being a good neighbor, you may know people and some of them may want to buy or sell in your community or on your block. Yeah, that's why I say uh, when you see police, firemen and uh, teachers, uh, uh, police and, uh, and fire, um, they want to support one another. That's like a family. And, uh, you know, if you tell people that you're selling real estate, uh, they'll come to you. And the same thing with the teachers. The teachers not only have other teachers, but they'll have uh, the kids move some kids will move every year. Their parents will move from one place to another, and uh, you can get leads that way as well. And someone who's civic-minded, who's in a community organization, that also might be someone who can uh, use that background and experience to get involved with real estate. Yeah, I've sold several houses that way myself. Uh, I'm community involvement. I do a community theater uh, on, on Long Island. I sold some houses that way. I put together a high school reunion. I sold a couple houses that way. Um, so there's different ways you can do it. If you belong to the Knights of Columbus or you belong to uh, another organization or group, um, you join the group because you want to, and you don't, you're not joining because you want to sell real estate. Uh, you buy, you, you join the group, and then once you join the group, you tell people what you do, and uh, you'll get some people who come through you. And also you can evaluate if they're interested in looking at houses, if they're interested in finding out the value of their house, you can uh, network with them that way as well. Yeah. Well, the thing, one of the things is if you're selling houses, you're going to have to uh, know how to determine values of properties, which, uh, which, well, part of the class, the 77 hours, there's a, a little bit of that that teaches it, but you would learn that more in your real estate office in, in more depth. And you can learn how to how to come up with prices. And we're going to do a separate show, which is available as a podcast on how to buy and sell a house. And you'll give more tips for someone who's thinking of selling or buying a house in this market. And that the, the podcast for those show that show and also this current show, if someone wants to tell someone else about it, is going to be on the website at nccradio.org. And of course, tune in on 90.3 on Wednesdays at 3 for other programs about real estate or law you should know. This is also work someone who's l losing their job from downsizing, who, who's retiring, or is not sh is taking time out from school, or is not sure about their future career path. The, the, you know, being in real estate can help give them something to do and and 
earn a living and, and take time out to see if they like it and it's for them. Yeah, when I say anybody can become a real estate agent, as long as you, you know, pass the class naturally. But I've had students, I've had one student who started taking the class at 17 years old. Uh, you need to be at least 18 uh, to get a license. But uh, her birthday was in the middle of a class, so she turned 18. And I had a gentleman uh, about five years ago who was 76 years old. So any anybody, uh, any any field, they can do do that. Uh, people who are downsizing, people who aren't going into offices anymore in Manhattan, they're working at home. They may have some extra time that they can show houses or take listings, uh, things of that nature. And periodically, because of life events, people need to find a bigger house or maybe downsize and move somewhere else or they're moving to Florida. So a, a broker or a real estate salesperson could take advantage and help people navigate those situations as well. Yeah, what happens is, uh, let's say somebody's moving to Florida, um, you can refer them down to Florida and you can get part of the commission if they buy a house from the agent that you refer them to in Florida. And if any real estate office that you would work in can uh, hook you up with the agents in other areas of the country and of the state. And even Long Island. You can, if you're Absolutely. covering one one or two towns, there, you have, you'll be part of a network of brokers who handle other areas. So wherever they're moving to, you can help them out. Absolutely, even overseas. I just remind our listeners, we're talking with Bernard Caprera. He's a real estate person with at Douglas Elliman Real Estate here on Long Island. He also teaches the real estate licensed person, salesperson qualifying course right here at Nassau Community. And you can take it over Zoom, except for the exam, or you can take it in person at Nassau Community, and as you've heard, this can be the start of a part-time or full-time or temporary career, and you can earn money lots of ways by helping people to buy or s sell homes. Bernie, just give us some of the ways people can f find out or register for that class, which is one class will start in March and others will begin at other times during the year. Actually, one might the Zoom class might begin as early as February, but they're given periodically throughout the year. Yeah, we give them. Uh, we, we do it uh, at least four times during the year. I did, I've done six uh, two years ago. I did six during. Okay. Uh, and how can people register for the class or contact you to find yeah. out more about it? Yeah, the best way they can uh, do is to call the uh, school up, um, and the phone number at the school is five one six five seven two seven four seven two. That is the lifelong learning department. And whoever answers the phone, uh, then the great people over there, they'll help you. They'll, they'll let you know exactly how you go about it. Okay, and you're going to give out the number later in the program. And as you said, that can be the beginning of a new career. It could be for someone, you know, who's 18, when they finish the class, someone who's going to college, someone who's, uh, you know, a homemaker, someone who's a retiree, someone who's between jobs. This can be the start of a a good career and maybe a part-time career. What are some other ways to grow and excel as a real estate person? Well, the main thing what you want to do is if you start getting some business, business will breed business. So let's say, for instance, uh, you get your license and uh, your Uncle Harry is going to be selling his house and Uncle Harry has you marketed for him. You become what's called a listing agent. And when you put his house on the market, you're going to put out all kinds of uh, ways of notifying people. You're going to have uh, the different computer sites. You're going to have multiple listing. You'll have a sign in front of the house. And what's going to happen is that's going to draw potential buyers, whether it's for that house or for maybe for other houses. And in addition to that, you may get people who are in Uncle Harry's neighborhood that are thinking about selling and they see the sign in front and they may give you a call. And if you get good a good price or a quick service on uh, you know able to sell the house quickly, that's you know that's going the word's going to spread, and that could lead to other listings. That's correct. Yes, especially when you put that sold sign out in front. And part of it is about providing service to help the buyers negotiate the different challenges they have, and to help sell you know people selling to negotiate the different challenges they have, and to be a resource for them in, in getting to the either accomplishing the purchase or the sale of a house. Yeah, uh, you're a problem solver. Basically, somebody has a problem, whether it's getting a house sold, finding a house to buy, um, whatever the case may be. 
Um, and your job is to solve that problem for them. And then the ways you're going to basically do that is, is by giving them a lot of information, answering all their questions and some things you may not be able to answer, but you can put them in touch with the people that can. And you can have other brokers and, and managers at that office to help you and support you every step of the way. It's helpful if you can bring clients, you know, into the firm. Right. Yeah. Most uh, I've worked for a couple of different companies over, over the, since I've been in the business. And um, most of the agents are very friendly and they'll help you out. They're not, uh, they don't feel like you're competing with them. Maybe with other companies you're competing, but the people you're working with, they usually work as a team. And you're also going to have many resources if they need to fix up the house, if they need to straighten out some kind of zoning problem, if they need financing, you're going to learn how to access all those, access all those things. You don't have to know it all, do it yourself, but you're going to know how to bring in a team of people to help make that sale or purchase possible yeah my company has lists of different things for instance if you want a real estate attorney uh, we have lists of real estate attorneys uh, you need work done uh, around the house you need a new roof whatever it is we can give you different uh, potential people that you can use what are the backgrounds that sometimes uh, real estate salespeople come from some of which may surprise people and to do it as a second career or a temporary career or a retirement part-time career i haven't had any unusual backgrounds but if someone was a salesperson if someone decorated their own house if someone themselves had been involved in sales or purchasing different houses they know part of the drill right if, yeah if somebody is, is buys and sells houses on their own they, they know the drill and uh in fact i want to a, a, a person like that can also contact the state and the state may allow them to bypass the 77 hours if they have the proper experience and someone who's also been in a leadership position or a, a guidance position or a counseling position in other fields that may work well for them in real estate because you're working with people you're guiding them you're helping them to problem solve and accomplish a certain goal yeah the, the whole thing is uh, being a people person you have to understand what people want. You have to ask questions, uh, determine what they need. Sometimes uh, they don't come right out and tell you what exactly what they're looking for. Uh, and you have to work your way through that. And you do that usually with questions. What are some of the things, other things that you cover, some of the different areas you touch on in the real estate salesperson licensing test class? It covers a lot of different areas. Um, I hope the state is not listening right now, but um, the one thing in they don't general, cover, yes, yeah, yeah, the one thing they don't they don't cover is how to sell. Uh, they teach you a lot of other things. They teach you about deeds, construction. But when we get done with the construction chapter, you can pretty much build your own house, at least in your mind. Mortgaging, commercial, what co-ops and condos are, how to handle them. Um, there's and, so, all kinds and some of, of the legal issues involved in selling a, a co-op or condo. Yeah. And also you have contracts and leasing chapters and there's a chapter on uh, closing, what's involved with uh, closing a transaction. And there are also some, you know, issues you learn about in terms of fair housing, avoiding discrimination, thing, other laws that come into play in buying and selling real estate. Well, fair housing is a cause celeb right now since uh, Newsday put that article out uh, about three years ago. Long Island, div uh, a divided Long Island. Right. Well, basically, I want to stay away from controversy, but basically the, the, the real estate salesperson has certain legal obligations in, in showing and, and facilitating that sale of homes. Oh, yeah. You have to know the, uh, the legalities of everything that you do. And uh, you can, you'll learn that either between uh, taking the class and then uh, there's other things you'll learn when you get on the job. And what are some of the skills that someone learns after they get in the field? What are some surprises that you see? You know, what is part of the learning curve? You mentioned sales skills, but what are some of the other skills that a you know, person learns on the job as a next step? Well, things you wind up learning on the job uh, is a lot of stuff about mortgages, which uh, most people don't know. Um, People don't realize how different types of mortgages there are and you know people don't know how much money you have to put down on the house and and the different costs involved uh, in owning a house and closing on a house uh, so you learn a lot of things uh, a lot of a lot about that and you learn uh, the whole process of uh, buying and selling a house and also in terms of cost when someone comes to you and says they want to buy your house you you've got to help them figure out how much house they can afford and what they can afford for down payment 
what they can afford, what they can get for a mortgage, and what is the total price they can afford on a house. Well, when I first got into business, we used to do that. Uh, I used to sit down with a buyer, and we'd go through all their numbers, and I'd have my little uh, editing machine in those days and figure out the numbers. Nowadays, uh, we do it through the mortgage people. Uh, we usually, what we do is we tell the buyer to talk to a mortgage person before they come in for their appointment. This way we know what they can afford. And it's important they know what they can afford before they begin the, the home buying process. Yeah, it is. You, you have to know. Because what happens is sometimes you may look at a house, it's a $800,000 house, you fall in love with it, and then you find out you can afford a $500,000 house. And then uh, you're thinking about that $800,000 one. And on it's the- been, it's so complicated. I'm sorry. It's been so complicated uh, with the mortgages and everything. Uh, now there's so many different variables. Uh, that's why we want them to talk to a mortgage person first. And on the flip side, someone has to know, you know, how much their house may sell for before they, let's say, buy another house because they have to know how much they're going to come, up, come away with from the transaction. Yeah, well, when we go, go in and tell them what the house is worth, we give them a rundown of the different costs involved and uh, approximately what they would walk away with after the sale. And what are some of the surprising things that people might learn in the, in the real estate salesperson qualifying class or, or on the job as a real estate salesperson? Well, one of the things um, they may find is there's a saying that buyers are liars. Uh, it's not really true. What, it, what they're really saying is the buyers don't know what they want. And uh, sometimes uh, you start dealing with buyers and you get frustrated because you think you're dealing with a, a serious buyer and in reality they're not that serious. Uh, that's one of the problems you run into. And the other thing you run into is you start doing your prospecting, you're talking to different people about selling their house. And uh, the, the death knell is, Ernie, when we sell the house, we're going to list it with you. That's the worst thing anybody can say because you never wind up getting that listing for whatever reason. So you want, you want that listing that day? Well, yeah, if they're ready to sell, absolutely. It's like a, a car, someone buying a car and telling the dealer they're going to come back. <laughs> You want them to buy it that day, because if they leave, walk out that door, you might not see them again. You're right. Bernie, just give our, our listeners that information, that that email or the phone number again for the real estate salesperson qualifying course, which will start in March. It's available in person or on Zoom, and it starts at other time, times of the year, too. So they can find out for themselves or a friend or colleague what's involved and you know take that first step. Yeah, what they can do is they can call the Lifelong Learning Department at the school. The phone number is 516-572-7472. And any of the ladies who answer the phone can help you. If you have any other questions about the real estate in general or about taking a class, and sometimes there's some technical questions, you can also call me. My number is 516 712 Nine six five four, and you've been instructing this class for a long time, and you're going to tell them what they need with a little studying on their part to get through the test. And they do have to come to the campus for the final, but otherwise it can be taken on Zoom any wherever they are. Yes, the only thing is they have to be uh, video. I mean, I have to actually see them. Right, of course, but they don't have to be physically present in Nassau community except for the exam. Just the final exam, the state demands that, yeah. Right. So it's, it's, it's a very good, if, if they're anywhere else in the state, this is a, a way to earn that credential and learn about real estate at the same time. The, you mentioned some people don't do well with real estate, but the ones that do, what things work for them? What prior experiences or backgrounds, what skills work for them in real estate? Well, you, you, you can't be timid. Uh, you have to be outgoing. You have to be detail-oriented. Basically, you got to follow through. You have to be able to accept defeat and 20 minutes later, forget about it. Um, so there's all kinds of personal things that, uh, that you, you would need. Um, but for the most part, people can be taught how to sell. And the defeat part is because not, you're not going to sign up every listing. You're not going to sell a house to everyone you meet. It's about the ratio and the odds. You want to just do it on a, a good, just like a, a, a batter is not going to hit a home run every time or get a hit. You just want to have a very a good, as good a percentage as possible. Yeah, well, Ty Cobb is the leading uh, average baseball hitter. He hit for 367 in his lifetime career. And then when you subtract 367 from 1,000. It's basically a third of the time. And, yeah. and, he's, and he's, a, he's a star. Yeah. 
So if, if a real estate salesperson sold a house one out of three times, they'd be a star too? They, at that rate, yes. What final tips do you have for someone who's thinking about whether to take the class and become a real estate salesperson, at, for, at least for this stage of their life? I, I think if you're thinking about it, you should try it. What's the worst that can happen? I mean, I realize it's uh, the money involved in the class, taking the class is, uh, is uh, you know, costly to people, but it's something that you can do. We work with you. I mean, I, I work with the students. They can call me off hours as well if they have questions or anything, which they take advantage of, and I don't blame them. And uh, whatever they need, I'm always there to help them. So uh, I think if you're thinking about it, give it a shot. You got nothing to lose. And you may be very successful at it. And you will learn about real estate in case you're working in the field in some other capacity. And even if you don't have some of all the skills or background, you can learn some of them. And sometimes you can team up with, team up with people who complement your skills in, in selling or, or bringing a deal to fruition. Yeah, sometimes what you have is if you have a, two part-time people, you may get two people who have different hours for their regular job. And this way that those two part-timers equal one full-timer because things happen during the week, nine to five, you know, you have a closing, it's going to be during the banking hours. Sometimes a uh, home inspection is going to be during the day, during the week. So, uh, so if you have that kind of a compliment, it works. And even if you're not good in closing the deal, if you know people who will list with your agency, there might be someone else in your, in your agency who's good at closing the deal or showing the house well yeah of course uh, we have other people uh, who's always willing to work with you uh, and uh, basically uh, if you have any problems there's always somebody to help you okay i would like to thank our guest bernard caprera and as you know he's the instructor for the real estate salesperson qualifying course starting soon here at nassau community college which you can take over Zoom, or on campus. For being our guest on Law, you should know. If you missed any part of the program or you want to hear his courses, his, his, about his courses on buying or selling a house, just go to the NCC website for Law You Should Know at 90.3 FM. And the website is for podcast, nccradio.org. And please join us next week at this same time for another program on Law You Should Know here on 90.3 the voice of Nass Community College in Garden City, Long Island, New York.